Kikita was a lucky Kiakik. Their species only arrived on the galactic stage 50 years ago, and they already had a reputation for their piracy. Most of his species were stupid fools to follow peace and seek allied. They were from a class 8 death world. They should claim what is rightfully theirs, which is what he was doing in human territory. As soon as he saw what he saw, he knew he found a gold mine. Fanatic of peace, squishy-looking without an exoskeleton, no natural defense, and having more than three five hundred stars under their control made it impossible for law enforcement to apply the law in the outer reach of their empire. He also asks his officer how many criminals they have, more specifically, how many of them would be competing for pirates. He salivated when he saw that only 0.002% of the human population were criminals, not pirate, and actually had no pirate competition in the galactic infobank. He had just pillaged a small colony full of human tech. Apparently it was a world for the future human scholar to go. Stupid scholar who needs them when all they need is their claw and chitin armor to got and pillage. He had to admit that four scholars, they fought well and hard for little squishy primates and managed to kill 15% of his pillaging crew. But at the time, he just thought the ones who died were just worse at combat than a species from a paradise world. They were not. He did not actually look up what planet they're from, but looking at them and the fact they had nothing to defend themselves, it was obvious they were from a paradise world. And so, when he saw a battleship-sized cargo carrier, he set up an ambush and pulled the vessel out of FTL with a subspace disruptor pulse in the middle of space. No star for at least eight light years away, so it could not call for help. He was watching his boarding crew board the human vessel. Strangely, though, they only detected one life form aboard. This was going to be easy, he thought. Though the ship was big, he had more than eighty of his soldier aboard the merchant ship, making quick work of sweeping the rooms, and as expected, they only found one human on the bridge. One human. He should have just blown the ships to bits and gotten to another galaxy. The human was sitting in a chair now facing his boarding chief, a very good combatant, less skilled than him, of course, but he was the best choice he had on hand. Where are the goods, human? his chief said. Vandal Prime, he said in a low voice, which for some reason sand chills in his exoskeleton. What do you mean? Where did you hide your goods, worthless primate? his chief shouted. Vandal Prime, where you... On Vandal Prime, he said, but there was something off about his voice. He couldn't put his manipulator on it, but there was something in his voice that told his primitive part of his brain to shout to him to run as far away from that thing as possible. He should have listened. What? I'm running out of patience, human. But I have run out first. And the light cut off. Bang, 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 bang. Two sec later, the light were back on and all six guards were dead, heads blown off, and the human pointing a weapon way too small to pierce their exoskeleton, let alone blow their head off. Run! Bang! And he watched in horror as one by one his best of the best were getting killed. Five minutes later, all he got back from his men was static. Prepare the crew and get me the enhanced, he said. Boo-boo, but Cap, you saw what that thing did. That was an order. We are 450 of the best of the Kiakik Pyrotech. We will not run from a weak primate, he shouted, and everyone got to their station and prepared to dock their vessel to the cargo ship. He was looking at the display screen when he saw the airlock of the other ship open and the human in a black spacesuit and a visibly larger weapon than the small one he had before jump into to void. Well, that's stupid, and me who thought I would get a good fight, he just... Clang! What was that? I asked, confused. E magboots cap. What? How insane is that thing? And it's now he realizes it was too late. He had a feeling he had never felt, or thought he could feel. He was an apex predator of his planet, the best of the best his species genetic could provide yet. Deep down, he felt. Fear.
The power cut off, then got back, and... Report? He is aboard, sir. Give me the cam. I want to see everything. Now! And his subordinate did as told, before all of the bridge started informing the crew where the border was and hiding them with the camera system, and horror was all he could feel. If his species could shiver in fear, his exoskeleton would be trembling, and the thing would just fire one shot with his weapon, and nothing, his soldier turn into a purple mist, and chitin chunks spread on the corridor. What the hell is that weapon? Yeah, looks like a projectile thrower wit. Impossible, he shouted. That would bounce off a chitin plate easily. But with video and chemical analysis of the area he was, it is a chemical projectile thrower. Just the recoil would be enough to fracture our plate. And that when it click, those forty Kyarkik who died on that planet did not had a weak chitin exoskeleton, or weak in general, they were outmatched by hairless primate scholars, and this was a warrior. He would then watch in horror as it killed crew member after crew member, soldier after soldier, man after man, shooting, throwing grenades, and using poison gas which would melt them in seconds. And he did not even have his spacesuit anymore to protect him. All of this in rage, but not like the one of a mindless best, no, worst, a controlled rage, killing everything in a mechanical way like a soulless automaton, but always shot first, always knew where they, where, always knew what they were gonna do before it happens. He had hacked into their ship system, and he could access everything, camera, doors, and gravity generator, and he used those assets perfectly. If they closed doors, he would open them. If they welded the door in place, he would place an explosive and breach the door. His enhanced crew gave him little resistance. At the star, he shoot one of them and killed him. But after that, all other times he would be against and enhanced. He would unload and reload a different type of ammo, which blew a half a meter diameter hole in their chest. Where is he going now? he asked. Hey! towards the bridge. Okay, I have a plan. Prepare to shut down the main power, gravity generator, and prepare a set of doors to open into outer space. And after a moment, everyone was ready to execute. Now, he yelled. Instantly light cut off. They were starting to float and could hear air being vented. Good we got rid of that thing, he said, but he, for some reason, he could still feel his brain telling him to run, hide anything, and he could understand why until... Clang. How the fuck is it still alive? It does not have a suit anymore. Give me back ship weapons. I'm going to turn this thing to space dust. Clang, 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 clang. Twenty seconds till power online. Clang, 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 clang. Fifteen sec. Clang, 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 clang. Ten sec. Faster, you impotent. Clang, clang, clang. The sound of mag boots was now very close. Five sec. Clang. What was that that didn't sound like... Boom. That thing, of course, could somehow hold his breath in space and still had breach charge. Before the security field could engage and prevent more atmosphere from venting, most of his bridge crew were floating corpses in space or were rapidly turning into a mist of blood and chitin chunks. And then it looked at me. At this point, I had accepted defeat and had closed my eye and prepared to die, but it didn't come. Wake up, you fuking cockroach! I opened my eyes to see the humans starting, weapons trained on me. Are you not going to kill me? Vendel Prime. What? Vendel Prime? What the fuck were you doing on Vendel Prime? I do not know where Vendel Prime is. Of course you don't. Let me refresh your fuking memory. You found a habitable moon which is called Vendel Prime and raided a fuking college. We did visit a moon. We did visit a planet with Shola. It was a fuking moon, and they're not fuking scholar, they're fuking stutan, and you ugly mother fuking roach, kill my fuking soon. And Kikitar started regretting the day he was born. Wait, that planet was way too big to be a moon. Sure, it had lower gravity than galactic norm, but not enough to be a moon. Oh, really? Want to see what Earth gravity feel like? And Kikitar suddenly fell on his back pin by his own weight, having problem breathing. Too much, 
he managed to say before running out of breath. Oh, really? That only 90% of Earth we still have 10% to go. And once the gravity increased again, his carapace begins to crack. But before he lose consciousness, gravity went back to normal. Don't you fuking dare to die. I've got something worse for your fuking crimes. You can't possibly come from a world with that much gravity. You come from a Class 8 death world, right? Yes. Why? Humans come from a Class 19 death world. His heart sank. 19 out of 20. Impossible. But his mind went back to those students killing his men by just kicking and punching them. How did you do all that? Humans are peaceful, and you barely have any criminal record in the Galactic Registry. Those fuking idiots of galactic law. Fuking hell if you ignore burglars and the occasional gang. We, the Mafia, are way more dangerous and organized. Galactic law enforcement gots nothing on the human one. That's why we haint even in their record. We just leave not enough trace for them to see any human involvement. And in the human territory, we are in the registry. But I have a mobile fleet, so it's hard to catch something when space has so much of... You know, space. This human was the leader of a mafia, whatever that means, but it's a criminal organization that is somehow off the record of the Galactic Registry, and he had a fleet. So anyway, Imma, but you in a stasis capsule, which is going to simulate what you did to my son, and each real minute here is a year in stasis, have a good detention. Before he could try to flee or just kill himself at that point, he was knocked unconscious. Three days later, Yunus Police hash 8967304. We have found and disabled the black hole bomb from the small craft using the code provided by the chief of the Black Fleet Mafia. We have then proceeded to give back the pirate to Kiakik custody and got the fuck away before they realized the treatment he had been given by the Black Fleet, though considering what had happened to lead to this event, I would have let him rot in there for at least six months. I refuse to take part in any way, shape, or form in the future diplomatic shitstorm that is going to rise from this incident. End report.